So welcome to this demonstration of the H&E stain. So the first step is after taking those slides down to water, we then um, shake off the water and then place each of the slides into the Coplin jar containing, in this case, Ehrlich's hematoxylum. Now that's a regressive formulation of hematoxylum, which means that we will be initially overstaining those slides and then through a differentiation step, we'll then be able to bring the level of staining back to the desired level. Now we leave it in there for about 10 minutes and a good way to keep track of time, as you can see here, is to put some masking tape out on the bench and write down the time when that's due to come off. So after 10 minutes, um, we then rinse those slides. Now you can put the slides directly into the smaller water bath, which uh, quickly makes that um, that water bath fairly dirty. So it's actually um, easier, less work if you rinse off the excess initially just with the um, with the hose there in the largest sink and then just transfer the slides over once they're essentially clean. If we come around to the side here you'll get a better look of what's going on. When the tap water hits that reddish mixture of hematoxylin you might be able to see a slight colour change uh, down in the sink there and that's because when the hematoxylin hits alkaline conditions it's converted more to that blue colour which is the the right final colour that we want in order to distinguish it from the eosin. Now we could leave those slides in the tap water for a few minutes or so and they would begin to ripen but in fact they're actually overstained um, intentionally so in order to really bring out the right balance of hematoxylin, um, we will have to engage in a differentiation step. So you can see, or might be able to just make out if I hold that over a bit of filter paper there, um, there's a little bit of background staining there on even the glass itself. That just shows you how much hematoxylin is there. So we use acid alcohol. That's the uh, differentiation step. There's very dilute um, acid in there. Make sure the slide is wet to begin. Give it a bit of a, a shake. And then my preferred method, because it's manageable and short, is one, two, three. Back in the water bath promptly to rinse off the acid alcohol. So that's a very manageable step. And I find actually for most slides, that's about all that is needed using that recipe. Then rather than using the tap water, which takes a bit of time, just apply um, some dilute ammonia to blue the slide. You might be able to see now it's a nice blue section. And we have actually removed some of that excess stain from the slide. Then for the next two, again, same process. Now you can see that there's probably a little bit of blue on that slide already. One, two, three dips in the acid alcohol, back promptly into the water bath to stop the differentiation process. And then um, final one, we'll do this one before the uh, ammonia. So you see again, there's a, quite a bit of blue background on that slide. One, two, three, back in the water bath. And then just make sure that it's blued. So that's really important bluing because you really have to bring out that nice blue-purple colour to contrast with the eosin. Okay, so I've given that three dips, and I know from experience with that formulation that that's approximately the required level of differentiation. Rinse off the ammonia. Now, to be honest, if I was doing a whole batch of 12 slides on a tissue that I've worked with previously and I'm familiar with... Uh, the various parameters, so the choice of fixative and everything else, I'd probably just move on from there in the interest of time. But the correct way when you're trying to optimise staining is to use microscope control, and that's what we'll demonstrate here now. So wipe the back of the slide, mount it onto the microscope, and you don't want it to dry out too much on top, but it's best to wipe the back so there's no water. So this slide looks pretty good. You can see the smooth muscle there essentially has no colour, and the collagen fibres equally have little colour, whereas the nuclei stand out quite well. So that's actually turned out 
pretty good and I'm happy with that. So you can put that in the water bath. That can sit there for as long as you like. There's no changes that will take place there. Now the next slide again we'll just wipe the back of the slide just to get off the excess water. We don't want that getting down onto the condenser. Now this one's um, oh, it's a bit different. So we can see this is some colon. There's quite a bit of heavy hematoxin still in the goblet cells. The collagen is quite blue and the smooth muscle also has a kind of bluish colour to it as well. So that's a good sign of requiring further differentiation. So you don't always have mucin, obviously, and perhaps not always some um, smooth muscle, but with the collagen you can tell that's generally in most tissue. So we just repeat that differentiation. I've given that a couple of dips again, rinsing it promptly in the water bath, and then just putting on the ammonia again to bring back the colour. So that's quite important. Every time the hematoxylin goes into acid or acidic conditions, it will go back to that red burgundy colour, and then we need to, to bring it back. Okay, so that's had a bit further differentiation, and hopefully that will be getting us a little bit closer to where we need to be. So remember, it's the connective tissue that's the really good test. All right, so that looks nice now. We can see some fibroblasts within that uh, collagen connective tissue there, but the collagen itself is pretty pale, and the mucin likewise is now quite pale. So um, that's good. I'm very happy with that. And so um, we'll just skip that third slide for now and uh, move on. So once we've actually got the level of differentiation correct, there's no rush to go to the eosin, so if you're staining some other slides, you can uh, leave it there. But the eosin is made up in 90% alcohol. So in preparation, we simply dip the slide a few times in the 90% alcohol Copland jar. And then the technique that we use here in this laboratory is simply to lay the slide on the staining rack. I'll just remove some of that stain from a previous slide that was being stained with something else and just simply dispense enough eosin to coat the entire slide and it's good to be fairly liberal with the amount that you're putting on because it is made up in alcohol and it will evaporate uh, slightly over the two minutes of application so best not to have a thin film have a have a nice uh, meniscus on top um, so it's really covering it quite well. And just debating whether I should move some slides there, get the excess stain off my uh, hands, and I think I'll do the third one up top. So as you can see, you can do multiple stains at the one time, but you do have to be careful. So I probably should have moved those other two slides down a little bit, but as long as you're careful and you're not contaminating your slides, everything should be okay. And then finally, just applying the eosin to the last slide there. So two minutes is usually pretty good. After two minutes, we simply tip off the excess eosin. And we don't rinse in the water bath. We go straight to 90 because that's what the eosin's already in. And notice the technique here that was demonstrated in an earlier video. Placing the slide uh, at, a, at an angle rather than going down into the, uh, the slots there, rinse the slide and rinse the forceps within each coplin. Give it a bit of a tap as we're transferring to drain off the excess fluid. Again, sideways in, and that's the, the higher level of alcohol, as you can see there. So it's well covered with the, the absolute alcohol. Rinse the slide and rinse the forceps as well. There we go. Just to really make sure there's no traces of water, give it a few taps on the side and then straight to the first xylene container. Once it's there, it can stay for as long as, as needed. There's nothing else that can really happen to it there. Just to demonstrate that again, so tip off the eosin, straight to the, the 90, putting it in crossways rather than in the slots. Give it a bit of a shake, rinse the forceps, rinse the slide. Then to the next one. So 
So again, rinsing the, the both the forceps and the slide. And then to the final alcohol. So if you get into the habit of saying that to yourself, rinse the forceps, rinse the slide, that's a good technique. So it really should ensure that you're removing all the water. I'm just going to leave those there because I know there's no water on them there. And then I'll grab the last one, use my hand initially. Straight to the 90, sideways again. Now into the 90s, so now there's a bit of water coming back on the forceps, but that's okay, we're going to get rid of that as we go through. And it's better to use the forceps, not your fingers, because you can really make sure that you're able to rinse um, not only the slide, but whatever is holding the slide. If you try and use your fingers, then that's that's less easy to to rinse at each at each point. There we go. So that's nicely rinsed. Give it a bit of a shake. Do you need to be also careful not to bring too much alcohol over to the xylene as well? So just giving it a bit of a tap is quite useful. So there it is. That's all done. Um, they can sit there for a minute or two and then they can subsequently be transferred to the other xylene for subsequent cover slipping.